Good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's uh, my great uh, pleasure uh, to have the opportunity today to speak at the business luncheon hosted by the American Chamber of Commerce in Japan. Um, obviously, all eyes, all eyes uh, seem to be on a comprehensive assessment to be uh, conducted at the Bank of Japan's September monetary policy meeting uh, in two weeks' time. Well, this is, of course, the main topic of my uh, speech today. Um, but before addressing that issue, however, I would uh, like to touch on uh, responses taken by central banks after the United Kingdom's vote to leave the European Union, the so-called Brexit, and the decisions uh, made at the Bank of Japan policy uh, meeting in July. Uh, for me, uh, these topics are not appetizers uh, served before the main dishes. I believe uh, they are very important policies on their own. Now, on uh, June the 22nd, uh, 3rd, uh, contrary to general consensus, uh, majority of voters in the UK is supporting leaving the EU, and this led to a global financial market destabilizing, manifested in such developments as the rapid depreciation of the pound sterling. As Japan's markets were the first to be exposed to the unfolding results of the referendum, uh, they reacted violently. The yen's exchange rate uh, appreciated rapidly and the stock prices fell sharply. The authorities around the world, including those in the G7 countries, uh, responded quickly and effectively. The G7 central banks expressed their intention to ensure adequate liquidity and support the functioning of markets. In the Japanese context, uh, we uh, judged it necessary to ensure accessibility of uh, globally operating Japanese firms and financial institutions uh, to funding liquidity in foreign currencies, in particular to the US, uh, US dollar funding liquidity. And to that end, to reinforce the backstop facilities that have been uh, installed uh, during the global financial crisis. Um, in light of uh, heightened uncertainty surrounding overseas economies, such as those stemming from the UK's uh, vote to leave the EU, uh, the bank decided at the uh, July policy meeting to enhance monetary easing. Uh, specifically, measures taken by the bank are threefold. Uh, this, is, uh, this is shown on the lower panel of this chart one. Uh, the first is an increase in banks' purchases of exchange-traded funds, the ETFs. Uh, specifically, uh, the amount of um, uh, purchases uh, will be uh, almost double from an annual pace of about 3.3 trillion yen to an annual pace of about 6 trillion yen. Now, um, this measure uh, aims at preventing the deterioration in business confidence and consumer sentiment and, pro uh, and, and promoting proactive risk taking. I think that this amount is uh, uh, significantly large, uh, given the fact that, as you see on this chart too, that uh, foreign investors' cumulative uh, net purchases of stocks amounted to about, uh, about 16 trillion yen for the first three years of Abenomics. Um, the second is a doubling of uh, the size of the bank's lending program in US dollars uh, to support uh, economic growth. Um, now, under uh, this lending program, the bank will provide back-to-back uh, -to -back, uh, financing in US dollars to uh, financial institutions by using uh, our own US dollar reserve funds. In cases where these financial institutions uh, make foreign currency denominated investment and loans to firms, uh, which uh, contributes to the strengthening of the foundations for economic growth. Um, the duration of the bank's lending can be up to four years through uh, rollovers. 
The loans under the program enable firms to receive stable funding in the US dollar over the long term, and the program has been actively used for uh, funding on firms, including uh, local firms, uh, through uh, regional banks. The size of the program was uh, doubled and raised to, as you can see, 24 billion US dollars. This is the second one. And the third is an expansion, uh, expansion in the amount of collateral that can be pledged under the bank's US dollar fund supplying operations. Uh, the bank has been uh, conducting US dollar fund supplying operations regularly with US dollar funds raised through a, a network of bilateral swap lines among central banks. Uh, with this operation, financial institutions can raise US, dollars, uh, US dollar funds on a full allotment basis as much as they want. Uh, nevertheless, there is of course a condition that the amount of funds to be provided is up to that of eligible collateral pledged by each institution because uh, in principle, a transaction with the bank uh, should be backed by collateral. Under the current monetary policy, uh, many financial institutions have sold Japanese government securities uh, to the Bank of Japan while holding a substantial amount of current account balances with the Bank of Japan. So under these circumstances, the Bank of Japan decided to establish a new securities lending facility, what we call the SLF, uh, in which the BOJ lends, uh, lends out the Japanese government securities uh, from our own portfolio uh, to counterparties of these operations against their current account balances uh, with the BOJ. It's a bit technical. Um, but this enables uh, financial institutions to raise uh, US dollar funds against uh, Japanese uh, government securities borrowed from the Bank of Japan. Um, the new facility is designed to provide for a rainy day by precluding concern about the lack of collateral they hold. So in this way, it is expected to further enhance effectiveness of the US dollar funds supplying operations as a backstop. Um, these measures, um, despite their technical nature, uh, can contribute meaningfully, I think, to ensuring access to funding liquidity in foreign currencies and thus to economic stability. I just wanted to uh, sort of uh, reiterate that such a technocratic end of endeavor is no less important than such big policy moves as a negative interest rate or the massive purchases of JGBs, the Japanese government bonds, uh, which of course uh, tend, to, tend to attract more uh, attention. Um, I would now like to turn to the broad framework of uh, monetary policy and talk about backgrounds uh, to comprehensive assessment. Um, as I said, against the backdrop of heightened uncertainty over the outlook for prices, and with a view to achieving the price stability target of 2% at the earliest possible time, the Bank of Japan decided to conduct at the next uh, monetary policy meeting to be held later this month a comprehensive assessment of the developments in economic activity and prices, as well as the policy effects over the past three years since the introduction of the quantitative and qualitative monetary easing, the QQE. Um, the background uh, to this uh, assessment is twofold. First, um, since the introduction of QQE, Japan's economy activity and prices have improved substantially. And Japan's economy, I think, is no longer in deflation. However, the price stability target of 2% has not been achieved yet, despite the unprecedented large-scale monetary easing. Uh, the bank will analyze how monetary policies has functioned during these years and what factors have possibly hampered uh, achievement of the 2% target. That's the first point. And secondly, under the so-called QQE with a negative interest rate, which ha was introduced more than half a year ago, uh, various interest rates, including JGB yields, as well as rates for lending and corporate bonds, have declined substantially. Thus, the policy, I think, already has exerted remarkable effects. Um, at the same time, however, 
it has had an impact on financial markets' liquidity and financial institutions' profits. The bank will also assess the effects and impact of uh, this negative uh, interest rate policy. Um, now, regarding the first point uh, on the mechanism of the QQE, I would like to start with the uh, basics of uh, monetary policy uh, transmission mechanism. Um, in fact, the main transmission mechanism of monetary policy, be it conventional or unconventional, it's the same. It's the same mechanism. Um, that is what we call the real interest rate effects. In other words, uh, driving the real interest rates higher or lower than the natural rate of interest, which is the level of real interest rate neutral to economic activity and prices. So the bigger the difference of these rates, the more effective the monetary easing or tightening will be. Um, the potential growth rate and expected growth rate are considered uh, proxies for the natural rate of interest, which I mentioned. As Japan has continued to struggle with the trend decline in potential growth rate uh, since the bubble burst, uh, the bank has lowered its policy rate to ensure the monetary easing effects. On this chart uh, three, uh, Japan's potential growth rate, uh, which is, is a proxy for the natural rate of interest, is shown in yellow. yellow and this is compared uh, with uh, the real interest rates uh, shown in red. Um, in 1999, uh, we introduced the so-called zero interest rate policy. And starting in 2001, uh, the Bank of Japan conducted um, further unconventional monetary policy measures such as uh, quantitative easing, and comprehensive monetary easing. Despite all these efforts, um, however, the monetary easing provi uh, provided by these, uh, these uh, policies proved insufficient to overcome uh, deflation. Now, based on this experience, uh, in 2013, uh, the bank set the price stability target of 2%, and with a view to achieving the target at the earliest possible time, it launched the QQE. Uh, the transmission mechanism, the QQE, are also expected to operate through this uh, real interest rate effect. Uh, this chart, chart four, shows how QQE works. Uh, QQE aims to raise inflation expectations through the bank's strong and clear commitment to achieving the price stability target of 2%, and through large-scale monetary easing that underpins this commitment. At the same time, the bank exerts downward pressure on nominal interest rates across the entire yield curve through uh, massive purchases of, of JGBs. Uh, the compound effects through these uh, channels uh, compress real interest rates. This decline in real interest rates boosts boosts firms and households' economic activity, uh, which in turn leads to higher inflation rates, uh, supported by higher inflation expectation. Um, it was assumed here that as people actually experience inflation, the actual inflation, inflation expectations correspondingly, correspondingly would rise further. Uh, now, this last point is quite important. Um, this last point is called an adaptive formation mechanism of inflation expectations. And it's a key concept of what I will talk about later. Uh, simply put, it's, uh, inflation expectations is uh, ad ad affected by the real, actual, observed inflation rates. That's the point. Now, the innovative uh, quality that might stand out in comparison with the measures uh, previously taken by the Bank of Japan uh, or elsewhere is that uh, that QQE focuses on, as I said, inflation expectations. Um, 
uh, specifically, as I mentioned, based on the so-called Fisher, Fisher equation, which uh, states that the nominal interest rate is equal to the sum of inflation expectations and the real interest rate. Uh, QQE, as I said, aims to lower real interest rates by raising inflation expectations while compressing nominal interest rates. This is the basic mechanism. And this basic mechanism has worked and produced intended effects. Uh, QQE brought about a decline in real interest rate by, as I said uh, repeatedly, inflation by raising inflation expectations and lowering the nominal uh, interest rate. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the natural rate of interest has been on a trend decline. Despite that, the level of real interest rate has been pushed down significantly lower than the natural rate of interest, and the financial conditions have improved. Um, specifically, a moderate increase in lending volume coupled with decline in interest rates, a rise in stock prices, and depreciation of the, the currency, the yen, have been observed. And these have boosted economic activity. And as a result, regarding the um, uh, uh, economic activity, corporate profits marked a record high level, and the unemployment rate in this country, uh, released uh, just last week, has declined to a remarkably low level of 3.0%, which I think is almost uh, full employment. And as for wages, the annual labor versus management wage negotiations in 2014 uh, resulted in base pay rises for the first time in two decades. This base pay rises have uh, continued for three consecutive years since then. It's a good thing. Um, now, looking at the economy as a whole, um, the output gap has imp uh, improved close to the long-term average of 0%. And on the inflation front, um, um, on, a basis of, uh, on a basis of excluding fresh food and energy, uh, the year-on-year -year rate of change in the CPI, uh, shown in red line on this chart 5, uh, and that had been around uh, negative 0.5% before the introduction of QQE in April 2013, uh, turned positive, and thereafter, uh, this index has remained in positive territory for uh, two years and 10 months. I have to mention that this is the first time since the, the late 1990s when Japan's economy fell into deflation that the uh, CPI inflation rate has remained in positive territory for um, over a protracted period. I think Japan's economy, as I said, is no longer in deflation, uh, which is commonly defined as a situation where prices decline on a sustained basis. Um, that said, however, um, it is true that the price stability target of 2% has not been achieved. And this also has to do with the developments in inflation expectations, uh, which is a key factor for uh, real interest rate effects to operate. Uh, looking back, the mechanism worked, as I said, uh, ex or uh, as, I ex as expected, or I should say better than expected, over the first year or so uh, from the introduction of QQE. Um, thereafter, however, uh, exogenous, exogenous factors uh, emerged, such as a decline in crude oil prices and weaknesses in demand following the consumption tax hike uh, from the beginning of fiscal 2014. And this was compounded by the slowdown in emerging economies from summer 2015 that accompanied volatile uh, developments in global financial markets. And as a result, the observed uh, actual inflation rate has declined, and inflation expectations, uh, which are formed in an adaptive manner, stalled. You can see on this uh, chart uh, six that uh, various uh, measurements of inflation expectations have um, uh, declined recently. So we think this 
seems to be the main factor that hampers achieving the price stability target of 2%. Uh, it is widely accepted that notion that, uh, that people's inflation expectations are formed by, by two, two factors. Um, one is a forward-looking formation mechanism, and the other is the adaptive formation mechanism. In Japan, the effect of the adaptive formation mechanism seems, ha seems to have dominated. Um, this seems to be partially because, uh, uh, partly, partly because the uh, price stability target has been missed under uh, prolonged uh, deflation. And of course, uh, in addition, uh, 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 during wage negotiations in Japan, such as the so-called spring, uh, spring offensive, or, or Shinto in Japanese, uh, wages, are, wages are decided on a basis of the actual price developments in the pre previous fiscal year. Um, so to the extent uh, the inflation remains low, uh, that affects the wage negotiation in the following fiscal year. Uh, now, this may have been one of the factors behind the adaptive formation mechanism. Um, the bank, by uh, continuing with QQE, has been trying to enhance the forward-looking formation mechanism and thereby to raise people's inflation expectations and anchor them to the price stability target up to percent. Um, as a result, perhaps we have managed to de-anchor the deflationary expectation that the prices will never rise, but inflation expectations are still in transition, so to speak, to be re-anchored at 2 percent. Looking ahead, as the observed actual inflation rate is expected to revert to a gradual rising trend, uh, inflation expectations will be pushed up by this adaptive formation mechanism. However, given that the observed inflation rate is likely to hover at slightly negative or about 0% for the time being, uncertainty persists about this point. For this reason, I think it is all the more important for the Bank of Japan to firmly maintain its commitment to achieving this uh, price stability target of 2% at the earliest possible time from the viewpoint of enhancing forward-looking formation mechanism. The comprehensive assessment is conducted with the aim of achieving 2% target at the earliest possible time. To avoid any possible misunderstanding, uh, this was explicit, explicitly referred to in the statement released after the uh, uh, policy meeting in July. At the forthcoming policy meeting, we will discuss what needs to be done to achieve the 2% target at the earliest possible time. Means toward reducing the level of monetary policy accommodation will not be on the agenda. Let me uh, now move on to the topic of the negative interest rate policy. Um, in terms of the um, transmission mechanism of policy effects, QQE with a negative interest rate is an extension of the aforementioned policies, namely um, the bank uh, considers, again, real interest rate effects as a basic mechanism. Uh, against the backdrop of weak inflation expectations that had uh, started to descend farther, the bank uh, decided to keep real interest rates lower by reducing the nominal interest rate beyond a zero bound. Uh, by applying the negative interest rate to a portion of financial institutions' um, current account balances with the Bank of Japan, in combination with its uh, JGB purchases, the bank uh, intended to further compress uh, interest rates on JGBs across the entire yield curve. Uh, this was expected to affect uh, various interest rates, including uh, those for lending, corporate bonds, and CP spreading the effects of a decline in real interest rates uh, to economic activity and prices. Now, on the other hand, <clears throat> 
from the inception uh, of this uh, negative interstate policy, the single most important issue has been that the policy should avoid having an excessively negative impact on financial institutions' profits, thus impairing the financial intermediation. Uh, based on the experience of the past six months, the bank will also assess the effects and impact of this policy. As I said, this will be the second pillar in our uh, forthcoming comprehensive uh, assessment. Um, in my opinion, uh, there are six, six uh, points uh, we have learned over the last six months since the introduction of QQE with the negative interest rate. Let me, uh, let me elaborate. Um, first, a combination of the negative interest rate policy and JGB purchases uh, proved extremely powerful in exerting downward pressure across the entire yield curve. Uh, this seems to have operated through, um, let's say, two, two mechanisms. Namely, A, the negative interest rate applied to financial institutions' current account balances with the bank has resulted in a decline in short-term interest rates. And B, financial institutions have been discouraged to hold current account balances through JGB sales and this, together with a decline in risk premiums caused by our JGB purchases, has lowered long-term interest rates. And moreover, the so-called search for positive yield by investors has boosted the demand for assets with positive yields, um, substantially lowering yields on super long-term JGBs. As you can see on this chart seven, uh, such mechanisms has exerted uh, strong downward pressure and flatten the yield curve, particularly toward the longer end. Um, this first point, I think, has proven the effectiveness of QQE with a negative interest rate, pol uh, uh, negative interest rate as a monetary policy tool. Um, secondly, um, some were concerned that lower risk-free rates or JGB yields might not lead to a decline in bank's lending rates or interest rates on copper bonds and CP as expected because room is limited for decline in rates on deposits, which are the main financing sources, funding sources for financial institutions. Um, I also consider that uh, uh, such, uh, such concern deserves some attention, but as you can see on this chart eight, uh, bank lending rates as well as uh, 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 interest rate for corporate bonds and CP have all fallen significantly thus far, each marking historical lows. That's the second point. And thirdly, uh, I think we are now uh, seeing some new developments regarding corporate finance, which is emerging recently. For example, uh, the issuance of uh, corporate bonds with maturity over 10 years uh, has increased. As you can see in this uh, red bars on the left panel of uh, this uh, chart, chart nine. And firms borrowing through uh, subordinated loans have also increased in, in the meantime. Um, super long-term funding uh, had been observed mainly in um, infrastructure firms such as those uh, related to electricity and uh, transportation. But now uh, it is increasingly shared by a wider range of industries as you can see on the, on the right panel of the, uh, the, uh, the chart. That's the third point. And fourthly, um, as can be observed on this chart, uh, chart 10, um, according to the, uh, the results of surveys such as uh, Tankan or the loan survey, uh, financial institutions' lending attitudes have remained quite proactive. They are actively lending. Um, so I think financial institutions' uh, lending attitudes have remained proactive. And thus far, we have seen uh, little evidence that the profit squeezed caused by the negative interest rate is adversely uh, affecting their intermediary function. Fifth, however, 
The flip side of such positive developments is the growing pressure on financial institutions' profits. Um, this can be seen from the larger fall in lending rates relative, relative to a marginal decline in rates on deposits. I think for Japan, the impact on, of the negative interest rate policy on profits of financial institutions tend to be uh, relatively large. I think this is uh, due to such factors as the amount outstanding of deposits far exceeding that of lending, and the interest rate margin already being extremely small following uh, prolonged competition among financial institutions. Given that profitability affects the soundness of financial institutions in a cumulative manner, uh, we are fully aware of the fact that the impact can vary depending, depending on the duration of the policy. The view that, uh, that uh, the Bank of Japan might disregard uh, the intermediary function performed by the financial sector uh, is totally unfounded. Just uh, let me mention this. In fact, ever since our uh, homegrown financial crisis in the 1990s, we have committed ourselves to maintaining financial system stability, uh, which is a mandate uh, given, given to us under the Bank of Japan Act. And besides, of course, the banking, banking system is the key transmission channel for monetary policy. Um, six, the final point. As long-term and super long-term rates have declined significantly, the rates of return on investment of insurance and pension products have declined. The sales of some saving time products are suspended. And the net present value of retirement benefit obligation has increased. Although direct impacts of these developments on the entire economy may not be as substantial, uh, we should take account of the possibility that such developments can affect people's confidence by causing concerns over the sustainability of the financial function in a broad sense, thereby uh, negatively affecting the economy. Let me, uh, let me talk a bit on uh, monetary policy uh, considerations going forward. Uh, QQE with a negative interest rate must be pursued, I think, as the most appropriate macroeconomic policy by striking the right balance between the powerful policy effects described in the first point, four points I mentioned and the possible adverse effects on financial intermediations that I listed as fifth and sixth points. There is usually a trade-off between these two aspects, but the way we balance them must be dynamic rather than static. static. A static and uniform judgment that rules out any further cuts in the negative interest rate in view of financial institutions' profits would not be the right approach. Depending on the situation of our economic activity, price, and financial conditions, uh, further measures might still be deemed necessary after weighing policy effects against the cost on financial intermediation. Um, through numerous discussions I have had with the leaders of financial institutions, I think I fully recognize the effects of the large-scale monetary policy on financial institutions and financial markets, and the likely impacts if, they, if the policy is to continue. Based on this uh, recognition, we will take measures that we judge necessary for Japan's economy. It is from this standpoint that I will participate in discussions of the com a comprehensive assessment at the next policy meeting uh, in two weeks. Um, based on a candidate, candid, based on a candid assessment, we will decide whether or not it will be necessary to make adjustment to the current policy framework. And if judged necessary, in what way it should be adjusted? 
Lastly, uh, let me uh, talk a bit about the relationship between the bank's monetary policy and the government's uh, uh, fiscal management and a growth strategy. Well, th these are things that I think are very important as well. The first relationship is that, uh, that, uh, is that with the uh, government fiscal management. Usually, when the government increases uh, fiscal expenditures by issuing uh, government bonds, interest rates on government bonds will rise which discourages private sector investment. And this effect is called the crowding out effect. In this regard, in a policy mix where the central bank pursues monetary easing at the same time, uh, the rise in interest rate will be contained and thereby, and thereby preventing uh, this uh, crowding out effects. Now in the current Japanese context, this is exactly uh, what has been in place. Market interest rates in Japan have been in negative territory across a wide range of maturities uh, due to the effects of this bank's uh, uh, QQE with a negative interest rate. Now, in this situation, the economic stimulus of the government's fiscal expenditure, coupled with the monetary expansion, is bound to prove very powerful to, to, due to this um, synergy, synergy effects. Now, this type of powerful policy mix has been in, in, in place in Japan over the last three years and is likely to be augmented further with the new large-scale fiscal stimulus package in combination with uh, QQE with a negative uh, interest rate. The second relationship is that with a growth strategy. As I said earlier, it is important that bank lowers the real interest rate while at the same time, the government raises the natural rate of interest by promoting growth strategy. In this regard, um, there should be an emphasis on the phrase, at the same time. Um, structural reforms raise potential growth and reduce uncertainty about the future so that firms and households spend more today in anticipation of higher profits and incomes in the future, thus raising current demand. On the other hand, demand stimulus from monetary easing raises potential output through an increase in capital stock as well as uh, labor input. Uh, thus, I believe monetary policy to overcome deflation and supply side reforms to raise the growth potential must be pr pursued in tandem or at the same time to bring Japan's economy back on track to sustain growth. The bank should continue with the monetary easing uh, that successfully uh, reshaped Japan's economy such that it may be described as no longer being in deflation and move farther to terminate deflation and achieve the 2% target. Meanwhile, uh, I think that is, it is worth noting that the government's uh, recent economic measures focus on investment for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, as has been introduced, uh, it's been 38 years since I joined the Bank of Japan. Uh, during this period, the economic and financial environment surrounding Japan has changed dramatically and the policy agenda for the central bank shifted accordingly. Uh, back then, as a freshman, I, I could hardly imagine that this central bank, traditionally renowned as an inflation fighter, was going to be engaged in such a difficult struggle to overcome deflation. Uh, now, such changes never lose steam. More recently, after the collapse of the Lehman Brothers, active discussions have taken place around the world about policy responses to the slower growth trend and the framework of the monetary policy in such a situation. And this is ignited by Larry Summers' uh, secular stagnation hypothesis. I have, I have already expressed my, my, my opinion on this issue in New York earlier this year, so I'll not be re repeating this uh, today. However, I have an impression that, uh, that some topics that uh, formerly had been confined to academic circles are today openly discussed as practical policy challenges that uh, need to be addressed from a medium to long-term perspective. I really feel this when I, attending, when I attend international meetings and conferences. Of course, the answers 
are difficult and vary from uh, country to country, and they are not as straightforward as those provided in textbooks. I think for policymakers around the world, I sense that this has become a kind of common challenge, challenge that underlies contemporary policy discussions and practices. I am reminded that in order for policymakers at central banks and governments to be appropriately keep abreast of the speed and dynamism with which the environment changes, they should not adhere simply, simply to past common sense. Recently, I often think that uh, we central bankers must have the courage to evolve with the times and adapt to the environment while cherishing the central bank's DNA, that is, policy actions based on theory and research. Um, this, this last point is uh, somewhat uh, superfluous and clearly outside uh, the scope of the uh, upcoming uh, uh, comprehensive assessment. And uh, I would like to, to finish my speech by reminding you the last point is this is just my thought. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Nakaso. And um, Mr. Nakaso has, has, uh, has time for just a couple of questions. And so I'm going to start, start the, the questions off. Um, uh, and he's, he's definitely, he has graciously agreed to, to, to participate in this. But uh, um, so to start, start off the question, um, so the, uh, Governor Kuroda's speech on Monday reiterated, reiterated the importance of raising the potential growth rate by undertaking initiatives for structural reform. Um, where, where do you think that the government um, has to focus uh, in, its, in the area of structural reform? And what, what, what items um, are most urgent? それでは質疑を取り上げたいと思います。まず1点私のことを尋ねていければと思います。えー、月曜日、エクロート総裁のスピーチの中で、えー、さらに構造改革の取り組むことで、潜在成長率を、えー、引き上げることが重要であるというご指摘がございました。で、副総裁にお尋ねしたいのですけれども、政府として今、構造改革のどの部分に最もフォーカスするべきであるとお考えでしょうか。First of all, th thank you for your questions.、Uh, let me first sort of、uh, apologize in advance、um, because my answers may be going to be a little bit boring. Please remember this is a sensitive run up to the policy meeting. ご質問感謝いたしますまた事前にお呼び申し上げたいと思います金融政策決定会合を控えた非常にまあデリケートなセンシティブなタイミングでありますので私の回答が退屈だったら申し訳ございません um, So the growth potential、um, It can be raised by increase either in labor input or labor productivity or both And in some areas,、uh, the growth strategy by the government has produced tangible results. さて、潜在成長率ですけれども、これは例えば、労働の投入、インプット、ないしは労働の生産性の向上、ないしは両方可能性ることを引き上げることが可能であります。そして実際に政府の政策によって、目に見える効果が出てきた側面もあります。Um, Japan's labor uh, uh, force is、uh, declining. Uh, because of the demography, but this can be、uh, at least partially offset by, by um, um, raising、um, the so called、uh, labor participation rate. And for example, the labor participation rate、uh, of young women、uh, in the age group of、uh, 25 34 in Japan has risen to exceed the corresponding rate in the US. The また、少子高齢化の影響を受けて、日本における労働,労働力は縮小しているというふうに言われているわけです。で、でこれを部分的に相殺するために、言うなれば、労働参加率を引き上げることによって、部分的にその影響を相殺することは可能であるわけです。例えば、日本における女性、若い女性、25歳から34歳、4歳、この年齢層の若い女性の労働参加率の、まあその潜在力は米国と比べても十分、えー、そう上回る可能性があるというふうに考えられています。With regard to your question, what needs to be done?、Um, I think there, there seems to be、um, urgent need to raise labor productivity. 
Japan's uh, productivity levels is about uh, 35 percent below that of the U.S., which is often assumed um, to be uh, 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 the world's uh, technology frontier. え、設定すると、ご質問に対するご答えでありますけれども、まず最も、え、その最も緊急に対処しなければならないものは何か。まずやはり、え、労働生産性を引き上げる必要があると、いうふうに考えております。え、世界の中でも、え、最も有数の技
であの、えー、お尋ねいたします、日銀は相当程度、えー、その国債、そして ETF が今、積み上がっているというふうに思います、もしもこの、えー、物価上昇、えーえー、ターゲット 2% を実現されたときに、何をされますか、なかなかちょっと 2% に到達しないので、えー、さらにその緩和の余地という議論もあるのですけれども、えー、いかがでしょうか。Um, what I should, I would do, um... 2%, I mean,、uh, when, when, when we hit that 2% target,、um, let me put it this way.、Um, if that target is achieved, perhaps I'll buy a bottle of champagne. ではお答えいたしましょう、まず 2% 到達したときどうするかというご質問ですけれども、もしもこのターゲットを実現できれば、私はそうですね、シャンパンを1本買うかもしれません。And perhaps a bottle of nice sake as well. また美味しい日本酒もまた買うかもしれません。もちろん、日本の値段は、もう1万円ぐらいです。もちろん、日本の値段は、もう1万円ぐらいです。もちろん、日本の値段は、もう1万円ぐらいです。でおそらくその段階では今申し上げましたこの商品というのもは多分 2% という水準を超えているものだと思いますけれども、まあ、その対価を喜んで払ってお祝いしたいと思っております。But, uh, seriously, of course,、uh, we are technocrats.、Uh, of course,、uh, we will always be、uh, thinking about how we could normalize the policies going forward.、Uh, just wanted to remind you that、uh, the people at the BOJ are equipped. With this kind of capacity. ただ申し上げたいのは、私どもはあの一貫として、今後の政策の正常化ということは常に念頭に,において望んでいるということです。また、日,日本銀行の,そのスタッフというのは、十分その能力を備え,備えた人材であるということも申し上げたいと思います。Thank you. I, I think we've run out of time, so if you would join me in, in,、um, in thanking、uh, Mr. Nagasaw for his, his、uh, very enlightening speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.